Hey guys, this is Austin, and today I'm taking a look at budget graphics cards. Are they even worth it? To test, I rounded up six cards under $120 and ran them through a few games and benchmarks to see how things stand. At $70, we've got the NVIDIA GT630 and AMD R7 240, both sporting 2GB of slower DDR3 memory. Move up to the $90 bracket and you're looking at an NVIDIA GT640 along with the AMD R7 250, this time with 1GB of GDDR5 each. Finally, at $120, you're choosing between the NVIDIA GTX 750 and AMD R7 260X, with the 750 only sporting 1GB of RAM where the 260X has 2. For testing, I used the Maison setup on a test bench. You can check out that video for the full details, but the basics include a Core i3-4130, 8GB of RAM, and a 250GB Samsung 840 EVO SSD. To put things in perspective, I also included the integrated HD 4400 graphics on the Core i3, so if you decide to completely skip buying a graphics card altogether, you get a little bit of an idea of what you can expect as far as the performance goes. First off, we have the Fire Strike benchmark inside 3 Mark, which can be punishing even on high-end hardware. Immediately, you'll be able to see that the extra $50 over the lower-end cards pays off, as the 260X is over three times as powerful here. Next, we've got Battlefield 4, a game that looks impressive across everything from consoles to $3,000 PCs. As a title that's very nice to cards that happen to be red, you'll see the AMD side wins easily here, although again, there's a massive difference as you spend just a little bit more. Codemasters is one of the few companies who do racing games right, and Grid 2 is a great example. Here, the Maxwell-based GTX 750 does much better, delivering over 90 FPS and soundly beating the rest of the group. While it might be a little while before we see a new Bioshock game, Infinite really delivered, easily being one of the best games of last year. Here, we see the 260X and 750 much closer, with none of the cards really playable on this setting, and the integrated HD 4400 graphics didn't even want to run. One of the best stealth games I've played in a while, Metro Last Light definitely doesn't skimp in the graphics department either. Again, the 750 barely edges out the 260X, and the R7 250 is the only other card able to keep above 30 frames per second, with the rest way back in the teens and 20s. While gaming performance is very important when you go out to buy a new graphics card, the amount of power it requires can also be sometimes a big factor. Here, the Intel HD 4400 in the Core i3 easily wins, with the rest keeping things between 70 and 100 watts or so. As the only graphics card that needs external power, the system with a 260X pulls in a still reasonable 133 watts under load. So if you're putting together a budget gaming PC, what should you go with? Now while the integrated Intel graphics are fine for most things, when it comes to gaming they really just don't cut it. If you want to get a dedicated card as cheaply as possible, the R7 240 isn't a bad choice, as it doesn't require much power and can play most games fine as long as you bump the settings down a bit. As far as the GT640 and R7 250 go, it's a bit of a harder sell. Sure, they're a bit faster, however for just a little bit more, you can get much more performance. This graph sums it up well, I think. The difference between paying $70 and $120 means you'll be getting nearly three times as much performance, letting you play games at 1080p at reasonable settings. Between the 260X and the 750, however, is a much harder choice. The R7 260X gives you twice as much memory, which is only going to get more important as time goes on, and you also get support for both Mantle and True Audio built in. On the other hand, with the GTX 750, you're getting a slight bit more performance and significantly less power, which is nice, especially if you don't have a spare 6-pin lead from your power supply. The final choice is up to your particular build, however I think the biggest thing to take away from this video is to try to avoid super cheap graphics cards. If you spend just a bit more, you're going to be getting a lot more for your money. So what do you guys think? If you were building a budget gaming PC, what would you use? Let me know in the comments below. Anyway, I want to let you guys know that I actually recently switched over to a new Facebook page. So it's now facebook.com slash Austin, not Duncan. So of course I do lots of behind the scenes stuff, post videos, that kind of stuff. So if you guys want to check it out, the link will be in the description of this video. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.